Who's the most courageous business person you know? A lot of people have trouble with that question because courage is not one of the traits we normally think of when we're thinking about evaluating business people. But that is going to change, and here's why. When I talk to CEOs these days, just about all of them are talking about transformation, reinvention, innovation. They all know that their business has to be transformed, and they're finding out that it's really hard. That's because transforming the business requires moving adequate capital, which is usually a lot, and the best people in the company away from protecting yesterday and on to creating tomorrow. Four quick examples of CEOs who have done it. Exhibit A is Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, when he got the job five years ago. Microsoft was widely regarded as yesterday's company. It had missed search, it missed smartphones. It was still all about the Windows operating system, which was still making billions of dollars. Nadella knew that tomorrow was not going to be about that, it was going to be about cloud computing. And so he did what was incredibly difficult. He took money away from the business that was making all the profit in the company just about, which was Windows, and moved it into tomorrow. Cloud computing, where there wasn't even a business. It worked. It is now one of the main players in cloud computing and Microsoft is one of the most valuable companies in the world up there with Alphabet and Apple and the rest. Took courage. In a completely different business, think of Bob Iger at Disney. He knew that yesterday's Disney business, as profitable as it was, was not going to be tomorrow. He knew that tomorrow was going to be about creating lots more content and streaming it online. And so he invested tons of money in acquiring new content, the Star Wars franchise, the Marvel superheroes, and more. And then he spent more, lots more, establishing Disney Plus, this new streaming service only three months ago, and it already has over 28 million subscribers. It was a big bet. It was not certain to succeed. It took courage. In another business entirely, General Motors, Mary Barra is CEO. There's a business where three revolutions are happening all at once, from gasoline-powered to electric-powered, from human-driven to self-driven, and from car-owning to ride-hailing. She's doing all three at once. She knows that's tomorrow, but it's not where the money is being made now. She did something that's just as hard, some say harder, than moving capital, although she did that. She moved best people onto tomorrow. One thinks of Dan Amon, an up-and-coming executive there, a fast-rising executive who became president of the company, the number two executive in the whole company. She put him in charge of the business that is doing all the revolutionary stuff that will be tomorrow. It doesn't make a dime of profit today, but she took one of her best people away from what's making all the money and put him on what's going to be all about tomorrow. One more example. Netflix, Reed Hastings, he knew that yesterday in his business was the legacy business of renting DVDs through the mail. He knew that streaming online was tomorrow, but he also knew that streaming other people's movies was not tomorrow. He had to create his own content, and so he put a huge amount of capital into creating House of Cards, an A-list cast, an A-list director, the only way he could get them to sign with him. After all, he was a nobody in content creation back then. He had to give everybody two-year contracts. If this didn't work, it was going to cost him a ton of money and destroy his credibility with the creative community in Hollywood. He made the bet anyway, and it worked. Creating tomorrow means taking away the best people and the capital that are protecting yesterday. That's really hard to do. It takes courage, and that's why courage is increasingly the quality that is separating the winners from the losers.